Hi everyone, and thank you so much for watching this video. Today I'm spending some time in my sketchbook, and I hope you will join me. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other sketchbook videos. I will link them below. All my sketchbook videos are in real time and just really relaxing and easygoing, and really meant for you to join in and to find some creative time together. Today I am painting an ocean or an underwater theme because in my creative community this is the theme of the month. I am using my Moleskine watercolor sketchbook, washi tape to tape off the edges, alcohol markers from Cas Art, which is an art shop here in the UK. Um, it's their own brand and I'm uh, really happy with them. I'm using some different gouaches, um, mostly from uh, Faber-Castell, but I have um, yeah, a selection of different ones. I'm not particular uh, in this video about the ones that I'm using. And I'm using my color pencils. I am <laughs> I'm also not particular about the color pencils that I'm using today. Uh, it's a mix of Faber-Castell, Derwent, and just general pencils that I have lying around. So you might already get the impression, it's a proper mixed media project. I did decide to give myself a limited color palette. I looked at some ocean photos and some photos of the Great Barrier Reef and I decided to really stick with these underwater colors. So a selection of different blues, blue like purples and a really bluish green as well. And then as a pop of color, a bit of orange and pink. I also decided to make a quick sketch on a bit of printer paper first, just to do a bit of brainstorming and to get some ideas of composition and where I wanted to go. And although I was planning to make multiple sketches, I was really happy with the first one and I just decided to uh, go ahead and use it. I find making a sketch before I paint anything in my sketchbook so helpful. Sometimes the pressure to paint directly in my sketchbook um, can be a little bit too much because I want my sketchbook to look nice. This is my nice picture sketchbook, so to say. Uh, I keep a messy sketchbook as well with slightly uh, lower quality paper. But this one I want to look nice, so I like to make a sketch beforehand, either in the sketchbook or on a bit of separate paper. A bit of a thumbnail to know what direction I want to go into. Making a thumbnail sketch is also a really great way of uh, looking at different reference photos and really truly making them your own. So I must have looked at about 10 photos of um, the Great Barrier Reef and just underwater pictures of animals in general. And I picked out bits and pieces that I wanted to include in this, um, in this illustration, including this turtle, some plants, some little fishes. Um, there is going to be a big wheel in the background, but none of it is directly copied from any photo. I really truly use them as inspiration and not to uh, copy anything from. And by making some sketches first, it can really help to use your reference photos in an interesting way. I'm just quickly making swatches of my colors, just because sometimes the uh, color of marker can look a little bit different on the paper than what I think it looks on the outside. And then um, I wanted to make sure that I was ready to start my illustration. And I quite like making a little swatch. It um, shows a little bit of the color inspiration that I'm going to use for this picture. And once I've done that, I put my sketch in a place where I could see it. And I roughly copied it onto my sketchbook paper. So um, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but I um, use my sketch as an uh, reference picture, so to say, for something that I'm going to create in my sketchbook. When I make a page for a children's book, for example, sometimes I even create 10 or even more thumbnail sketches, just until I find the right composition and the right angle. Um, and especially if you do it on cheaper paper or digital on my iPad, um, it really gives me the freedom to experiment a little bit, and it doesn't matter if it's not tidy or if it's not a good drawing or it's all just to like a brain dump of lots of ideas on the paper and I find it super helpful. I would really recommend trying it if you don't do this already. 
In my Makings and Musings creative community, we are drawing ocean animals this month. And the live section is next week, and everyone who shares the picture of what they've made in the community group after the live session um, has a chance to win a print of this illustration that I made here in this video. It, um, it looks really great as a print. I scanned it in, edited it, and I'm printing it on archival quality printing paper that I use for my art prints and um, yeah if you want to have a chance of winning it make sure you check out my community and see if you can join in into this live session next week. I'm doing something a little bit new for me today. I'm combining my alcohol markers with paint and usually I combine my alcohol markers with color pencil and this is a technique that I use a lot because it gives really beautiful vibrant illustrations and it's a lot of fun for me to do and today I decided to layer my base colors in marker first and then paint, up, paint over it using gouache and um, it's a bit of an experiment and I love experimenting I find drying out new things with art materials so much fun and um, yeah let me know what you think I'm curious to hear if you experiment with your materials and if you use them in ways that might be a bit unexpected or maybe not the way that is, you know, that they're advertised as using them before. Or, um, I think uh, sometimes you can create really beautiful textures and um, yeah, create artwork that is a little bit unexpected if you do it this way. And I find that a lot of fun. I'm starting with my lightest color markers. And I'm slowly filling my page with the shapes of the waves as you're looking at them from uh, underneath. So from the bottom of the sea we're looking up where you can see the waves sort of moving above us. That's what I'm trying to illustrate. As you can see I've already sketched out a few of those shapes but I will add more and I'm just trying to fill it in a fun and interesting way. I've looked at some pictures as references but I'm also making it up a little bit because it's okay if the colors look a little bit different from how they look in reality. I love drawing with markers because you can fill quite large areas of your paper quite fast but you can also add intricate details. I'm planning to paint over this later, so it's okay if I make it a bit too dark, I can go over it with white paint and add some light streaks in it. The sea water has blues and greens and even some purples in it. So I'm really playing around with colors. I'm trying to create something that is a bit magical more than realistic. It's okay to change the colors a little bit sometimes. The pattern that the sea creates is so interesting. I really loved looking at these uh, waves from underneath. And I want to add some big animals in the background as well. The main focus is this turtle, but there are some other animals swimming in the background, maybe some larger animals. When I set up a painting, I always start with the big shapes and the big sort of shapes, colors first. So I color block everything out and then I slowly add the details. I am to this both digital as well as when I work traditional, doesn't matter if I'm painting or when I'm working in charcoal. Um, I'm very much a multi-disciplinary artist or a multi um, method artist, or so I don't know how you call it, but I like to put my hands on any art material that I can find and I love using paints, pencils, watercolors, um, oil paints, crayons, um, anything, yeah literally anything that I can lay my hands up. I like working digital. Um, 
And I used to think that because I worked in lots of different materials that my style was not consistent. However, recently I went to the Bologna Children's Book Fair and there's lots of different publishers there and publishers that I never worked with before as well. And I showed um, the publishers my portfolio, so I must have had 30 portfolio reviews. And I received very consistent feedback that I have a clear art style. So my worries were maybe for nothing. I uh, do seem to have a clear style and um, well, people might like it or might not like it, but they saw a clear consistency in the art that I'm making, uh, whether it is traditional or digital and painting or drawing, they clearly saw like some sort of consistency there, which um, was a bit of a relief to me, to be honest, because this is something that I uh, have been a little bit worried about, because I uh, always think that artists with a clear style um, are much more recognizable than artists who don't have a clear style. And I thought I fell into the later category, but apparently um, well, other people do see a style in my work. I think sometimes we as artists are being too close to our work to judge it properly. I think sometimes we look at all our different pieces so intently and we see all the differences that maybe we lose sight of um, yeah, the overall theme or something you do in a specific way in all your artworks or something like that. So, yeah, it was really interesting to hear. I really enjoyed the experience and it was really interesting to to uh, look at your work through someone else's eyes. In my last video I spoke about my different income streams and how I make money as an artist. And um, I received really positive feedback on that. I think many of you really enjoyed hearing more about how an artist or how an illustrator as myself uh, makes a living by making art and the different ways that um, you can do so. And um, it was a little bit scary for me to make, but I'm really glad that I did. And perhaps I will make some more videos where I talk about income and where I talk about um, yeah, my art portfolio, how I got clients, the more sort of professional side of being an illustrator. Um, let me know if you find that interesting. I uh, would be very happy to share that information. I'm trying to make a little character out of this turtle, so not too realistic. Make sure that there's a bit of a uh, yeah, clear expression on their face and um, the way they're swimming. I want to make sure that there's some movement in those flippers. Um, I really enjoy making little characters out of you know, objects or animals that I'm drawing. We are about 15 minutes in this drawing now. And I might just let the music play here and there. Hope you enjoy just having a calm video, no time lapses today. If you want to follow along, I'd love to see what you've made. I always love seeing what people are creating. Do you find it hard to make time in your sketchbook? I am um, try and plan in my sketchbook time in the beginning of the day because I'm so fresh and then to me it's important but as soon as I start doing something else sometimes I can uh, forget about sketchbooking a little bit. So as soon as I start answering emails and uh, work on my website before you know it the whole day is sort of gone. Um, so it's important to start with sketchbooking because otherwise it's hard to make time for it. I also really enjoy taking my sketchbook outside and either uh, sitting in a cafe and draw the people that I see or you know, sit outside uh, and drawing the nature that I see around me. Um, it's something that I want to do more often. I think it's so wonderful to be able to draw from life, but it's very hard to film. So um, I've not found a chance to uh, film it for a YouTube video yet. The, um, it feels a little bit awkward to film when you are surrounded by people because not everyone likes to be filmed. And when you sit in nature, there's always wind or rain or not a flat surface. Or there's all like different reasons what makes it a little bit harder to film outdoors compared to when you are in your home. Uh, you have a clear tripod 
a flat surface and clear light here next to a window. Um, but I might give it a try at some point. I might see if I can bring a friend along who likes to uh, sit outside with me or maybe also to make some art and um, who can help me set up the camera to make sure everything is sharp and things like that. You can see I'm slowly starting on the foreground, these rocks and corals. I'm still working a marker, just filling out the shapes. Adding some uh, darker shadows to the water. I have not planned out any of these colors beforehand. I'm just making it up as I go. Actually, I've had some color inspiration beforehand, but I'll just uh, let myself be guided by what feels right in the moment. The more you plan things out, the harder it becomes sometimes. And making this mostly for fun. Although, as I said beforehand, I um, did create an art print out of this illustration because I was very happy with it and I thought it looked very cute and I wanted it to share it with people. But I uh, did not decide this beforehand, only when it was finished. The largest print I can make of this is A4 because it's, my sketchbook is not very large. And blowing up pictures after they've skimmed them in. Is, is a bit hard. It's easier to make a larger painting smaller in a print than the other way around. I'm still not 100% sure if I prefer working in a sketchbook or on loose paper. I really like the flexibility of loose paper um, and the fact that you can then bundle it together uh, or keep it separate depending on you know, if, if you think things go together and uh, you can work in different sizes. But I really do like the feeling of a completed sketchbook. I think sometimes the constraints that you put upon yourself by um, working in a sketchbook can also be very liberating, very freeing, and they can encourage more creativity. I think there's something really wonderful about having a finished sketchbook in your hands afterwards as well. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I work a lot on loose paper. Um, and mostly for commissions. I love working uh, large when I do a commission so I can make my illustrations smaller if I need to. But the benefit of a sketchbook is that you can carry it around really easily. Take it with you when you go on holiday. Maybe I should do a video about the art materials I take with me on a journey or when I go somewhere on holiday. I have so many ideas of things to film. <laughs> Sometimes I get carried away a little bit. You can only make one video at a time, right? So you can see I'm using my marker to create a gradient. Let's see if I can make a bit of a feeling of depth in the sea. I might buy some more colors at some point to create an even softer gradient. I think I have 24 colors in this set. Not, not too small to be honest, but as an artist you always want more colors, right? I think turtles are such magical animals. They are beautiful and elegant in the water and a little bit goofy as well, especially when they're on the land. And, uh, I absolutely love drawing and painting them. I have actually created quite a lot of paintings of water turtles. I, um, I was on holiday in Turkey once. Um, this is years ago. I was still in high school. So I think I must have been 16 or something. This was one of those beach holidays with a group of friends, which I don't really do anymore, but back then I've not really done many of those to be honest. But this was um, a beach holiday uh, in Turkey. And when I walked over the beach in the evening with my friends, we saw a sea turtle come out of the water and look around on the, on the beach. And it was a really magical moment. Now I think, oh, the poor turtle was probably looking for a place to lay eggs and it was too busy and there was tourists there and it had to turn around to go back into the ocean. 
Um, but back then I did not really know much about ocean life and I just thought it was really amazing to see such a creature so up close. So um, I still treasure the memory. I think it was still a beautiful moment to see a, a turtle so up close. But it's also a bit sad, of course. I feel like I've learned so much about nature and about animals and wildlife uh, in the last few years. I think there's much more attention on wildlife programs and conservation um, than there was a few years ago. And uh, I've always loved animals. I've been a vegetarian since I was a kid. Nowadays I do it for lots of reasons, but back then I did it mostly because I loved animals and I couldn't bear eating them. And now um, my reasons are much more, uh, yeah, much more many reasons that, that I do this. Um, but I just feel like as a, as a society, this Western society I live in, um, we have learned so much more about you know, nature and what's good for nature, what's bad for nature. Um, I, feel, I really feel like we need to do more to conserve the nature around us, to protect it. And I feel people are also taking much more action to, um, to do so. But on a really small scale, I know a lot of kids in the village where I live in, they all do big cleanups and all the kids help out tidying up rubbish from nature areas or from beaches. And on a big scale, I know that uh, on a governmental level, there's much more conversations going on about preserving Mother Earth. So um, I tend to be a little bit of a pessimist when it comes to things like climate change, just because it's something that really worries me and that scares me. But I try to be more optimistic. The underwater colors of corals, they are so vibrant when the coral is healthy. So vibrant and colorful. Um, and I really wanted to add some really popping vibrant colors in this illustration as well. I wanted to make sure that it feels like healthy life coral that we are looking at. So some really bright oranges and pinks really felt um, yeah, in the, the right place here. It is funny that when you make a video like this, that an hour um, feels quite long, especially when you're editing a video and you're doing a voiceover. An hour in a sketchbook feels quite long, but actually, to only work on a painting for an hour is not that long at all. Often I spend much longer on paintings than what I do today. I decided to make a big wheel um, in the background of this picture. And I wanted to have it a little bit out of focus, just there swinging in the distance. And you might have noticed already that a few times I grabbed myself a pencil and I'm adding in a little bit of detail in the picture already. Color pencil and marker are such great, they're such a great combination. If you don't uh, use these two together yet, I would really recommend it because you can create really beautiful vibrant colors by combining alcohol marker with color pencil. And when you have darker colors marker, you can draw over it with a light color pencil um, and you yeah, create contrast again in that way. This wheel has lots of little freckles, little dots. You'll see later on when I add the paint that will come out a little bit more. I'm making it a little bit of a 
and a bit of a sketch with pencil already. to start painting. So you can see I've done sort of an underpainting um, in marker already, mixing up my gouaches and I'm going to start adding a layer of paint. First I wanted to change the tone of the sea a bit more, add a few more gradients, Try mix up the right color first. And this is the moment of truth because I'm painting over my layer of marker with gouache. I'm not 100% sure if the marker is going to bleed out or not. And it turns out it is not. The marker that I'm using seems to be fairly waterproof. When you paint over any type of color, it's always worth checking beforehand so you know 
if something is going to bleed out or if um, it's going to stay solid. So when you're using ink, marker, pencil, it's worth checking to see if it is a water-based um, pencil or a waterproof or water-based material or waterproof material I should say. Gouache is fairly opaque so I'm mixing it with a little bit of water because I want to see the um, marker colors through it. I don't want the paint to be so opaque that everything that I've already done sort of disappears. You can see I'm being very careful here. I'm adding a little bit of paint. I'll wait for a moment and add a little bit more. Take a little bit of time to gain my confidence today. I love painting water. It is um, something tricky about painting water. Water is um, translucent but also full of color so it's a really tricky combination sometimes. I think watercolor paints are perfect for painting water because of the way it dries up. Same with gouache, it's also water-based paint. The way it dries up gives these natural shapes and flourishes that fit in perfectly with the water theme. I know lots of people who can paint beautiful water scenes using acrylics. But I uh, don't tend to use acrylic paints very often. I have a strong preference for more natural paints, watercolor paints or oil. Although there is a time and a place for everything. I do use acrylic sometimes. I have a bit of a selection. I love the look of water paints, gouaches.
adding a bit more detail to this wheel in the background. You can instantly see it a bit better. Um, I don't mind that it sort of falls off the paper and that it's hidden a little bit because they're such large animals. I wanted to create that sense of scale. It is supposed to be in the background. Because it's supposed to be in the background, I'm trying to blur it in a little bit with what's going on in the background, so with the waves of the water. Same with this, this other dolphin type of creature, Orca. I wanted the, um, the water to sort of go around it and not behind it. White gouache is a little bit like magic. You can cover almost anything with white gouache. And today I'm using it to create these light beams in the water. So this is where the sun shines through the top of the water onto our subject, so around the wheel. And I really wanted to create that, that feeling of the sun sun rays shining through um, and painting in white gouache is almost a little bit addictive adding highlights to painting can uh, it's really easy to overwork it i think i might have overworked it in this painting a little bit should have stopped here i think painting with white it's very interesting and I would recommend any watercolor artist to have a tube of white gouache at hand to add some highlights back into their paintings if they want.
really enjoyed painting all these colourful little fish. Um, I really wanted them to pop off the page and red is always a great eye catcher. I hadn't used any red anywhere else, but for these fish I wanted them to really jump off the page. So with reds and oranges there could be a scroll of little fish there in between the rocks. I'm not sure if I ever mentioned this on this channel before, but I have an aquarium at home. Um, I started it a few years ago and I'm really trying to make the environment perfect for the fish that I'm having. Um, I want them to be super happy. I feel a little bit guilty about keeping fish in an aquarium, but I started it now and now I have the responsibility to look after them. Um, and they're just the most beautiful, uh, calming creatures to look at. And the funny thing is that my fish have very different personalities. Um, I have this loach that loves lying on his back, it's almost like he's sunbathing. Um, and there, uh, he just really makes me laugh, I love looking at him. And since I have the aquarium, I learned much more about what happens to tropical fish and that they're being catched and shipped all over the world for aquariums. And, um, yeah, it makes me very sad. I did not really know this when I started. You can see I've switched to a much smaller brush for this. I tend to use the biggest brush that I can find for most of my painting, but then I like to add detail with a smaller brush. I think when you want to paint quite loose, using a bigger brush is the best way of doing it. So that's what I'm trying to do. Use a large brush and not to get too focused on the detail, especially in the beginning of the painting.
slowly getting more and more detail. And sometimes you have to go over an area multiple times. I often notice that when I, uh, when the paint is dry, colors are not quite as vibrant as I wanted them to be, or um, yeah, sometimes I want to change things a little bit. So I often go over one area multiple times. I love adding detail to my artworks. It's where you create a character and really make it truly yours. Just touching up the light rays that are breaking through the water surface. I want them to be a little bit clearer. Really create a sense of the sun rays coming through the water, having that warm tropical sort of feel to it. This picture was a lot of fun to paint, I really enjoyed it. Once I finish these light rays, I'm letting my picture dry. And then I'm going to go in with color pencil and add final details. In close up you can see a little bit better what the true colors are. I'm grabbing some pencil and especially with yellow. I love adding yellow pencil to my paintings. It really gives that sense of a sunny day. I think yellow might be one of my favorite colors. And you can see color pencil over paint or color pencil over marker works really well. The pencils that I'm using um, are a mix of artist grade pencils, mostly um, combined with a few older pencils that I have lying around that I still use sometimes. The colors are very vibrant and they work perfect over gouache and over markers as well. create a beautiful texture that way.
just adding a little bit of final detail to these fishes, make sure they have fins and tails. A little bit of texture to the rocks. The final details I'm adding is with my black uh, fine liner, just adding the finest details in black to the illustration. And this is something that I do on a lot of my artwork. It's a bit of a signature move that I like to use, is adding some black to my artwork. So I'm giving a bit more texture to the plants, adding in a few little shells on the ground. Making sure the fish have eyes. This is a waterproof um, ink pen from Faber Castell. So that means if I want to paint over it again, I can do so. But today I did not. This was just a final, final little bit of detail on this picture. So all I need to do is just tape, take the tape off. And it's finished. Scan it in. Make sure that all the colors are the true colors digitally. And then it's ready to be made into a print. It is available in my shop on my website. And as I said before, one of my creative members has a chance of winning a copy of this print if they share a picture of what they made. Uh, of their own underwater scene, underwater animal, into my community gallery on my website. So if you want to, um, yeah, be you know have a chance to win it, make sure you do that. I love peeling the tape; it's always so satisfying to see those white edges. And there we go. This is my finished illustration today. And this is the digitally edited version. Really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you around soon. Bye!